Hi, welcome to the next episode of Making Mannequin Heads into Planters. I was gonna say, why does my hair look orange on one side? <laughs> Who knows, as you get older, your hair turns weird colors. Uh, my hair used to turn weird colors because I chose to have them it ch uh, be weird colors, but oh well. So uh, if you're enjoying this at all, if you're not, I don't care. No, I do. Uh, if you are getting a kick out of this at all, and I'm just going to tell you right now, fast forward. If I'm blah, 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 and you want to see what I did next, just fast forward. I have no qualms with you fast forwarding. Um, otherwise, it's basically like, I know that every episode that I've done is like a train wreck. Sometimes you just can't look away. And other times you're like, oh my God, shut up. So put me on mute. Fast forward. Just watch me in the background. I don't care. I just hope you learned something. Um, as in, I don't care. As in, as in, it won't bother me. I do care if you are enjoying it because I do care about people, weirdly enough. Anyway, I don't know. I guess I'm in a weird mood. Um, when am I not? Um, so, <laughs> so, look at this. Are you ready? So this is what we did last. <laughs> I was looking at him. It makes him look like he's got horns, right? Right? Do you see it? Do you see it? I guess you get to get the right in because they go on both sides. I think it's great. So I was like, all right, and that's done. And I'm done with Barnacle Boy. Yeah, well, I'm not. You should know better by now. I went ahead, you will notice, though, and I pulled a bunch of paint um, because I... I'm excited about doing one of these back here. Not sure which yet. As um, awesome. That's all done with just makeup. No prosthetics. That's just a person's face. So I don't think I can get, well, I mean, who knows? Maybe I can. I know I actually could do it, but I don't know that you want to watch me spending the time to do that. <laughs> So we will do a, an outside version. Oh, no way. What the hell? Wow. Okay. My temples of my glass is just totally disintegrated. What the? Wow, that was weird. I mean, I've had these for... <laughs> There's stuff like just falling off of these things. Holy crap. I mean, I've had them for many years. The temple, I don't know if you saw that. It was, it just went flying. I don't even know where it is. I don't even see, oh, there it is. So that part, apparently the, is it a, yeah, it's a metal screw. The metal screw, it's an actual screw in there, is breaking down the plastic got a chemical reaction going on whatever they used on oh there it is still it i guess it's rusting and just i don't know anyway well that just happened and was very exciting and there's no way i can put it back together actually you know what i can do ah, let's see if this glue works all right i'm gonna hold it far away from me i'm gonna pop a little since i got this magical glue it's just gonna always be open but actually, I need to put it on here because I know this surface better. So I'm putting on just a little teeny bit, hoping that it's just gonna stick. That's all that I need. Just a little teeny bit. Use the tip because we know that it doesn't really do much with the tip of sticking to itself. Do that. Put the lid back on. Hold it far away from myself and see if I can just glue these puppies back together. All right. Oh. Of course, I can't really see that well. Oop, there it went. Snap, snap, crackle, pop. I think that's actually gonna work. And they'll just be no longer, oh, well, that actually worked almost instantaneously. Okay, well, that's that. Maybe I should just glue this one because this looks like this one's breaking down too. It's all crickled and crackled and I'll wait until it breaks down completely. All right. Well, that's glued together. 
the magic of having super glue at your fingertips. So barnacles. So I thought I was done, but I have one more beautiful little shell that has these fabulous barnacles on it. I also have little teeny barnacles here on my desktop. Oh, you can't quite see them. I'll bring them back so you can see them there. Hopefully you can see that. There they are. See a little there? And the reason I realized it is I went to pick it up to move it and I went <coughs> So I got one here. These barnacles, you just take your thumb. We got these. Where did we get these? I brought this back from one of our trips. I think I got these Marco Island, actually in Florida. And um, I'm pretty sure I did. It's the first time I'd really seen a lot of shells with barnacles, sizable barnacles. Ooh, that was a good one. And um, so I'm just going to pop these off of here with dragging them from the base as I do it. I'll leave the shells behind. I knew I could do something with them. You know, that's how my brain works. It's like, ooh, art! So all I'm doing is I'm taking a thumb and basically pressing. Oh, wow. Ah! And that happens. It's almost kind of like you push against the tooth and the whole tooth comes out of the head. <laughs> I did lose one. So I got all of those. They do look a little like teeth, don't they? <laughs> ah, love it. Yeah, that's my evil laugh. That's what everybody's like. Oh God, that evil laugh, It's that's not right. All right, there we go. Those are really cool. See how little hollow they are? I don't know, here, let me see if I can focus on my fingers. It's too close. It's neat, right? I think it's neat. So I got a bunch of those. So what I wanna do is I wanna finish him up. Cause like on the back, he was missing something. So I'm gonna put a few of the, just a few of those to decorate like down his neck. I'm going to glue them on. It's amazing how they just come right apart because they were all like individual little critters. They're all in, un, little individual underwater critters that were living on, I'm assuming taking calcium from the shell itself maybe, I don't know. Look up barnacles, see what they are. I, I'm kind of assuming these are barnacles. I mean, they look like barnacles to me. Like they're like miniature versions of what you would see on a ship. So. Oh, I'm going to put my glasses on. Hope it doesn't stick to my face. <laughs> this will be a fun experiment. Tacky? No tacky. Let's see if they don't pop. Oh, look at that. Ha ha! The joys and wonders of super glue. All right, so I'm going to put some of these on here. Oh, that's a really interesting shaped one. It's very flat. And these, this one I'm going to put up here because it's so different. I can get it surface area that's actually gonna stick. When you there we go. This one I'm gonna put really gonna flatten the bottom out. It's got a ridge. So I need to make sure it's pretty much flat without a bunch of sticky uppies. There we go. And then put it here. Hold that little puppy on for a little bit. Doesn't take much, just a few seconds. I'm gonna do it somewhat symmetrical. Lean them against the paint pots. That is not staying because it's got this ridge. So it's got this little ridge on the edge. I don't know. I don't think you can see that. Maybe you could just then. I want to take that off. Make sure that the bottom is flat. Because it, it does not have enough surface area. Oh! Oh, wow, they are super fragile. Super fragilistic. <laughs> You're welcome. You may have been thinking about it too as I said it. Um, well, that's not going back together. I am not doing that. There we go. Here's one. Moving on. Wait. 
right there. Oh God, and I just glued it to my finger. There, stick it on and move on. Barnacle. I'm gonna put a, one on either side here. Oops, this went directly on the rubber itself. Oh gosh, it's got quite the curve. So maybe this one will work better actually on, yeah, look at that, I'm getting, it's sticking. Putting it on the area. Oh, these almost look like vertebrae in the back. He's got just the tips of his vertebrae sticking out of his, the back of his neck. Hee <laughs> hee, that's awesome. All right. So that's a ridge around the edge. Hopefully I don't break this one too. There we go. Oh, you know what would work? Didn't even think of it until just now. A little sandpaper, very gently. I wasn't going to break them. Take down the high points. Yep, that did it. Flatten it right down. Bum, 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 bum. And, oh, I guess that one's going to go there. It wants to live there, so there'll be some. I'm going to go down the center, but I'm also going to go on the side, I guess. I'm going with it. There we go. Oh, it's sticking. This guy. All of those. Well, this is certainly weird and creepalicious. Yeah, so now I got my pattern. Very simple pattern. I'm going to put another one little one up over here on the rubber stick right there it's amazing how the human body does really actually make patterns if you think of it like symmetry and stuff like that um there we go that's pretty cool yeah, you can see that. Um, not perfect ones, but regular ones. It's pretty cool that it happens throughout nature as well. You see it in flowers, and you see it in plants all over. I think I can get that one to stick. Aha! As I stick my fingers together. Want it to actually stick to the head. I like it that the, the it's like the cup part is out. But yeah, I mean, like we got two eyes, one on each side. We got two ears, one on each side. Like when I'm teaching voice, I always tell people, it's like, okay, so you have muscles all over your body. So you know that all over your body. You know that. Well, after I teach them, they probably don't. Most of them probably don't consciously think of it, but muscles really are only active, like active, active in one direction. They, when they contract, when they become smaller, and then they release. I know it's a super simplification of the idea, but that's basically what happens. So this comes into play when you think about, like, my arm. My bicep is pulling my arm up, fundamentally, right? I mean, there's more to it, obviously, than that, but that's basic. Um, basic concept. And then my um, sorry about that. Then what's pulling my arm back down? It's the triceps are pulling, but my bicep is like resisting so that it doesn't go blah. You know, just flop around. So we have them on all sides of our body. That's what keeps us up. So then when you think about the anatomy of your body when it comes to breathing, what is keeping you vertical uh, other than your spine. So it's not your spine. I mean, you've seen um, skeletons, right? And But have you ever thought of this? Well, as a singer, these are things you have to think about. Because in order to breathe correctly, you have to tap into the correct, coord not only the coordination of the musculature, but you have to have sort of a consciousness of how the muscles all work together. And what the reason for that is that you need to be able to understand how to get out of the way of them and let your body work 
as RuPaul says. Um, but once you're able to really get a concept or an under, oh, there, wow, that sticks very quickly, uh, a heightened understanding of your breathing or of the, how the musculature works, how you keep yourself up, then you can get out of the way of, if you're sitting like this, why can't you breathe? Because you're crunching all the muscles and they overlap one another and they, they, they're they symmetrical and all these other things and a lot of them are. Um, so it's really interesting. I love, that's one of the things I love teaching is really sort of blowing mind pe people's minds because it blew mine because I never consciously thought about it until I had this fabulous John Farella voice teacher who was like, do you know how this mu these muscles work together? You use them all the time and you do a pretty good job. They could be, it could be better. And I went, I don't know what you're talking about. And um, he just walked me through the fundamentals of breathing for singing, but the anatomy of breathing for singing. So when you think about that in your art, it's one of those things as well. How do you make it look sort of organic a little bit? Symmetry, balance, uh, things like that actually contribute to that. Oh, I need I do need one more over here. Poop. I like throwing them all away. So it's something to think about, something to consciously keep in your in parts of your brain. You don't want to, however, just like with singing, you don't want it to get to the point where it makes it so you can't do what you want to do. Because you can think about it to the point where it it'll freeze you up, right? You're like, it has to be symmetrical. It becomes then a restriction. Um, people's faces are meh symmetrical. I mean, we're on, on, we're not like, you've done, you've probably done it where, you know, you take a picture, it used to be if you're an older person, you took a picture, you fold it in half or you cut it in half, put the other side. And then well, this is what your face would look like if both of your sides of your face looked exactly like, well, my nose is like super crooked. So if you put my nose like dead straight down the middle, yeah, that ain't my face. And you know, one eye is saggier than the other. One eye is, you know, higher than the other. My you know, blah, blah, blah. Ooh. These are glued. I just did this and I'm just like <laughs> gonna break them. So think about all those things that freeze you up when you're doing art, when you're painting, when you're doing sculpture and all of these things, that our faces are not exactly the same on both sides. Our bodies are not, my arms are not exactly the same length. My fingers are not the same length on both of my hands. Um, they're very similar, right? But they're not the same. One arm is larger than the other. So if, if, if you can let it get in your way of being like, it has to be exactly the same and do calipers and all these things. Well, then it doesn't look real. Um, and that's great if you're making like a robot, because that's the way you make it not look real, is you make it look too matchy-matchy. So you can take makeup, and I can make the illusion, I can do the illusion, so if I do like a white line down the top, or you know, a, a highlighted highlight here, darken here, I can make the illusion that my nose is then straight. I mean, because my nose is really wonky, right? A couple of breaks from fights when I was living in Europe and stuff like that, you know, my, my wild days, literally like getting punched and having my nose broken a couple of times in fights. Um, one of them wasn't my fault. <laughs> it really wasn't. Um, that was during the first Gulf War and they found out I was American. Um, but anyway, so yeah, so if I didn't have the lump, if I didn't, if I had the, the symmetrical or the perfectly straight nose, then it changes my face. Because from different angles, my nose looks like, whoa, that really goes over that way. And this way it goes, oh, it's just, just, just regular nose, right? Figure these things out when you stare at yourself in our, you know, on a screen for a while when you're doing TV ads and all that crap that I did. Not crap. It was fine. I enjoyed it. Um, but when you're modeling and things, you start obsessing about these like anomalies on your face. Um, so the cool part is you can use it. You can let it debilitate you and freeze you up uh, or you can embrace it and understand it and go all right I know that these things make us organic we develop differently and therefore my if I want something to look organic um, it can't be too 
perfect. If I want it to look non-organic, then I can make them look perfect. I can use, I can do two of the exact same thing and put them together and suddenly it looks inorganic. But you can, that's all the same thing with the singing. I do that. I can, I can know so much. I know so much about how the mechanics of my body works. I, I know the anatomy. I know the physiology. I know like, blah, I know way too much about it. I just, cause I've been teaching for so long. And so I can choose to let that totally get in my way and be a stumbling block to my singing um, because all I'm thinking about is breathing the entire time, or I can take it to the next level where I focus on it, I obsess over it until I find a balance where it becomes a natural rhythm and I get better at it and more efficient and then I let it go. And I move on to something else that, that completely takes my focus because what I've just worked on this is like paint techniques. This is art all over. Every aspect of your life is this way. When you move on to the next thing, that thing is still there and developing in the background. So my breathing is still getting better. My breathing is, you know, I check in on it periodically, make sure that, you know, that habit doesn't work, that doesn't come back in, that I was doing inefficiently. But that's the beauty of it. If you, if you do that and you allow yourself the room to grow and then move on, to the next phase or to something else where you can really focus on that and then you come back check in and then you've got two things that are just working in an automatic mode with art i find that i have to let go a lot right i have to do something where i'm like okay technique 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 then let it go then let it become you technique 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 breathing uh, I, I'll the exercise and then the whole thing and the, the focus, 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 then let it go and work, move on, work on, on something else. And incredibly enough, our bodies do this amazing thing. Our brains work with our bodies to then become what they call muscle memory type of idea, where it becomes I'm breathing in the way I'm supposed to be breathing. It changes your phys like your physical way of breathing. Like every time I take a breath, um, no matter if I'm doing it for singing or not, I breathe differently than non-singers or people who haven't been trained to breathe. So in art, I, I've done enough painting with different scales and different types of brushes so that I adjust to my brush automatically now. And then I will have moments where I'm like, this is not working. I need to go further back. I need to choke up on the brush. I need to turn the brush. And I have those things that I've learned along the way through videos that I've watched or instructors, Andrea Fry, if you ever watch one of these, your mom, Barb Fry, blew my mind. I took like, I think three art lessons. Mom, mom had me do art lessons with Barb and Barb is just, her, her artwork is, pr continues to be just phenomenal um, when you see it. So if Barbara Fry, look her up or are up um but god bless her because the timing in my life when i when i saw that she had us put things upside down and then draw them and paint them and they came out so much better because your eye wasn't assuming things so that's a technique that i use still i'll turn something up i'll turn it on the side and i'll just see the lines instead of superimposing things so and then i'll do things where i'll turn my head while i'm painting to get a different perspective. But these are things that I practiced, I focused on, and then I integrated or tried to integrate into what I was doing globally. All right, so where does this apply in the rest of our lives and our psyches and everything like that? Well, it's, it's a lesson and it's an approach that is more than just a, a sort of a, a one-off. I found one more barnacle, by the way. It is something that if you consciously allow yourself to do that learning process, the time and space that you need to be able to then move on to the next thing, you, you are going to be learning so much faster, so much more efficiently really is really what it is, and you'll get better at that focus and letting go. 
practice does not make perfect. I was doing karate a lot. It was kung fu. When I did kung fu, um, one of the kids I was young men that I did karate with, brilliant AJ, great kid. Oh my God, what a great kid. Um, he would always be like, perfect Patrick, perfect practice, perfect Patrick, because he practices. And I said, no, actually, I'm very not that person. I practice does not make perfect because if you're practicing incorrectly and you're practicing bad and you're, pra and you're practicing and ingraining bad habits or things that are not healthy or things that are not good for you, then practice makes worse. Bad practice makes bad. Perfect practice makes perfect. Focus practice makes better. That's what you want to focus on. Or that's where I live is focused practice Let's make it better. Because um, I'm never going to be perfect. And I am really okay with that. Um, I don't strive for perfection. I strive for beauty. There's a huge difference in my world for that. And practicing something to make it perfect is never a healthy thing because it's not going to happen. Practicing something to get better at it, that's exciting. Accepting that practicing focus practice makes better and just being better at something can be enough, should be enough, because next time you do it and you do focus practice, you're going to be even better. And then you may pick it up and you may be like, oh, I forgot everything. You didn't forget it. You're just having a day where it's not coordinating. So in art, playful practice makes exciting. All right. Like and subscribe. Um, and I'm going to let this dude... Barnacle Boy has now got all of his barnacles on him. And um, now i got to figure out... Still, i got to figure out the painting side of him. Uh, I think it'll come to me. I, it, I think it needs to be sprayed. So, I want to make sure that the flaps... That up in here, it's a little bit thicker. See what colors may be coming through. So you talk, think about opacity, all of those things. Metallic, non-metallic, who knows, maybe, maybe it needs to be more organic. Oh, maybe it needs to be aqua, aqua colors. I have that. Look at her. You may look really good in that. All right. Like and subscribe. Love yourself and love other people. All right. And practice. Not to be perfect. Just to get better. Give yourself the space to learn. Always be learning. Always be loving. Bye.